Welcome everybody. This is lab experiment number two. This is our Howard College homepage. I'm gonna scroll down to Blackboard. All right, I'm gonna open up, as I said before, mine looks different than yours does. I'm gonna click on our class. Here we are, anatomy, and then I'm gonna go down to number two. There's good old Ron Burgundy, and then here is our lab part. So I'm gonna scroll down. Now here, lab number two, cell structure and function experiment. I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the link that goes to eSciences like I had mentioned before. I would go over here and open this in a new window. And now you have this. Now this is a great learning activity for cell, prokaryotic, eukaryotic. And what I want you to do, there is a part that if you go through and you will read through this, is an interactive type lesson. So here, here's even a did you know. And go through, read all the parts. It is parts that are have to do with the lecture and the lab as well. But I'm going to go down and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom where it has assignments and procedures. So do this lab drill. It says go to the quiz. And then I'm going to go to this. Now, cell structure and function. You're going to open this up, you're going to open up the viewer, go through, and then you're going to answer the post-lab questions. It's very self-explanatory. Um, when you study cell in lab, you usually look at an onion slide, different stages of mitosis. Sometimes you look at some whitefish eggs, same thing there. So that's the first thing you're going to do. Now I think I can just go backwards. Eh, maybe not. Okay, exploring cell size. So here we go. This is our experiment inventory. Here is what you're going to be doing. You will uh, be using a bottle of auger. And then here are all the steps. And I will go through that with you. All of this, I'll show you some of the, uh, well, except for this part. There are some calculations you're going to have to do. It's very easy. Follow their formulas here. Um, I'll probably come back up with that at the end. And then down here at the bottom is a data table. You can enter your what you're going to be doing. So I'm going to go back up here one more time. Now over here, this lab workbook. Now what I've done is I've copied that and it's the lab answer report sheet. And it is Maybe I can actually go back this time. I can. <clears throat> it is right here. This sheet is what I want you to use. You're going to save this to your computer. While you do your experiment, you may write down notes. You may do whatever you want to do. Hand write them, type them into the computer. When you go to turn your assignment in, this is the sheet that I want you to use. Here is the rubric that you're going to be um, judged upon as to how well you did with your um, experiment. Here are some pre-lab questions. They all have a point value. Answer those. Be thorough with your answers. And then here are some post-lab questions. And some of this came from the onion slide viewer. Um, and then down here is our experiment. Here's the data table. And then here are your post-lab questions all the way to the bottom. All right, answer those. When you're done answering that, you're gonna save your results on this document. And then you're gonna come down here, click here to submit lab report two. You're gonna have it saved to your computer. You're gonna go back up here where it has submit, file upload, um, once again, yours is going to look different than mine because I'm getting the teacher view. You're going to label yours lab report number two. You're going to browse your computer. And you're going to upload your document. And then you're going to submit it. Easy greasy. Here is your experiment inventory. And we'll get started from there. All right, here is your lineup. This is your overview of all the things you're going to need out of your lab kit. On the left are some beakers. 
there is a there's the bromethyl blue bromothymol blue excuse me the solutions and everything now here's a picture on the left are the beakers in the middle part is the auger along with the vinegar uh, stopwatch and then the plastic wrap and on the ends is the bromothymol blue and the 15 percent solution now this is the starting lineup here this is an auger bottle that's used for a lot of different things but you're going to heat this up in a microwave so let's go to that next all right so here is what we're going to do remove and loosen the cap of the auger bottle and place it in the microwave a little bit more about auger auger is used in microbiology labs it's used to grow micro microbes but in this case we're going to heat it up and turn it to liquid so first thing you want to do loosen the cap and i would leave the cap on it you can actually take it off if you want to uh, i'll leave the cap on put it in the microwave Let's make sure it's in there there it is and then shut the door Okay, after heating it up, you're going to do it in 10 second cycles. You see it starts to loosen up a little bit. You want to heat it up some more. After a while, after about a minute, it's going to look something like this. Now it's fully heated. It can be really hot, so be careful taking it out. So the next thing you're going to do is you want to pour it into a 40, well, pull, get your 100 mil graduated cylinder and pour 40 mils into that cylinder. Just like, just like so. And auger will solidify if you let it sit too long. So don't rush, but don't be slow either. Now next you're gonna pour it into a 250 mil beaker. Okay, you wanna get the bromothymol blue and your little 10 mil graduated cylinder and you're gonna pour basically the whole bottle in there, 10 mils worth. Bromothymol blue is a blue dye. So just like that. And then you're going to add that to your 250 mil beaker. So all these instructions are right in front of you. Just follow as you go. Okay, next. Now what you want to do is you're going to add another solution to your mixture. Now this is the 15% solution it says use a pipette i just got the 10 mil graduated cylinder and i emptied two mils in it that way and then i added that to the 250 mil beaker that had the auger and the bromothymol blue okay next once you get that mixed together and slosh it around you're going to pour it into your mold and that plastic mold comes with your lab kit just like so You want to cover it with some of the paraffin wrap. Just set it on top of there. And according to the lab instructions, you can let it cool for about 24 hours or 12 hours. Just wait for it to solidify and then wash out your remaining stuff, your cylinders and your beaker. All right, now it's solidified. Okay, what you can even tap it on there. You can use the hard surface in your lab kit or whatever you want to do. now. I actually helped it come out a little bit and then the next step is you're going to make some cuts into your auger. So use the ruler that came with your lab kit. And here you go, you're going to make a one centimeter, one centimeter by six and then you're going to do some other smaller cuts from there and I'm just going to show you an example of how that's done. I didn't necessarily measure these but that's what you're going to be doing. You want to measure out a centimeter and then just read the directions and make your little cuts like that and then you're going to do your pictures with this. So there you go. I'm going to pick up towards the end. You saw me, I had the little block of auger and then I had the knife I cut just, I didn't really measure mine. Part of an online class is that you do, you actually get some more out of it if you read some of this on your own. I am going to show you a picture of what I want it to look like. But if you go back up here in the the e-sciences experiment part that's outlining what you're supposed to do it says here assessing cell size and then from your block you're going to cut a one 
centimeter by one centimeter by six centimeter block, a long skinny block. You're then gonna cut a one by one by one centimeter block, small block. And then you're gonna cut a one by two by two centimeter block. This is supposed to show you why cells require a certain amount of surface area. Cells cannot get too big, okay? Because they cannot, things through diffusion osmosis cannot cross cell membranes at a fast enough rate to support larger cells. So most cells will reach a certain size and they have to divide. It says here, use a ruler to calculate surface area volume and surface to area volume ratio. Now this is actually really easy to do. So measure out 150 mils of acetic acid vinegar that comes with your lab kit. Um, put it in a 250 mil beaker, the one you use for this experiment. It says gently place all three blocks in the acetic acid solution. Let the blocks rest for 30 minutes. Observe as the blocks begin to change color from blue to clear. If any of the blocks completely change color, record how long it takes for the complete color change to take place. This would be good for using your stopwatch. After 30 minutes, uh, take them out of the vinegar solution. You may gently blot them if they are wet. And then you're going to do your measurements. So for each block that did not undergo a complete color change, measure the distance the vinegar diffused into the gelatin tube. I did that earlier. So I want you to do this on your own. Read through it. And as indicated by the color change, do this by measuring from the outer edge of the block to the blue rim on the inside of the cube. You'll see this. And then it says record that on table two. It's actually pretty easy to see. So here's how you're gonna do your calculations. Here's length times width to get area. And then it gives you a sample problem here. Um, if it's three centimeters long, what's the total surface area given? The length is three centimeters, the width is three centimeters out of six, and there are six sides to the structure. So three times three is nine, and six times nine is 54. That's really easy. And if you're gonna be an allied health person, it actually helps to be able to do calculations. I don't know how much you're gonna use metrics, but you do have to do conversions. And then you're also gonna do one for volume. Length times width times height, same thing. Here's a nice sample problem. Do these with your cubes. In this case, three times three would be nine times three would be 27. So you just sort of keep multiplying. And the volume of a cube is 27.0 centimeters. So here's your data sheet. And then you're gonna enter things here. You're gonna calculate the distance of diffusion. And when you go to turn this in, I'm gonna go back. So I was doing this particular experiment. Let me go back, I think it'll actually let me do that. It will. Now, once you've collected all your data, you're gonna take this answer sheet. I'm gonna open it up. Like I said, you're gonna save this to your computer. At least my computer's fast, oh my goodness. It is having a download off a of blackboard, but all right. So here is the rubric, and I'll try to put this in some written instructions. Here are your pre-lab questions. Here's your first experiment you're gonna do using the, um, the module experiment one with the onion root. And um, here's your cell structure and function. Now, to get full credit for this, you're gonna have to fill out this chart, answer these questions, and then I want you to take a picture, all right, of your blocks. Now this one, they're gonna look something like this. Do the measurements that you were asked to do in the actual assignment. Okay, and you're gonna drop your picture right in here. Okay, take it with your phone, camera, whatever, upload it to your computer, put your picture right there. All right, and that is lab number two. And um, please email me if you're having any trouble. And like I said, 
takes a while to get your lab kits, so you do have some time before your due dates. 